All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores, and we have some slightly bad but expected news, and also some really good but also expected news as well to dive into. Jaden Daniels is not practicing today. J Dan Quinn had a full press conference and gave a full injury update on that entire situation, plus starting left tackle Brandon Coleman's injury update as well. Also, the Washington Commanders are getting huge help at the linebacker position in this upcoming game against the Bears. We're going to dive into all of that and more, but before we do, make sure you stiff arm that like button, stiff arm the subscription button, stiff arm the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned to all of the content. Really appreciate y'all for pulling up and supporting every single video video appreciate y'all leaving the likes and everything like that of course i will be live streaming this upcoming game against the bears i feel like we're gonna win Jaden daniels or not hopefully Jaden daniels can play though and at this point with everything that's going on with the commanders i'm doing like two three videos a day it's literally been three videos a day since monday but i'm having fun and make sure you stay tuned make sure you're always coming back to the channel and refreshing just to check to see if you've seen the most recent video without further ado let's go ahead and dive into this video let's get it adam Adam. All right, so let's talk about the Jaden Daniels situation first, because I'm pretty sure that's why most of y'all came here. But of course, make sure you stick around for the second half of this video when we're talking about the huge linebacker hat help that the Washington Commanders will be getting, because we're going to do a full dive into relative athletic score, everything for that. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But either way, Jaden Daniels will not practice today. Dan Quinn confirmed in his press conference today. He said, of course, with the rib injury, won't participate in practice today and is close to getting back onto the practice field, just not there yet. That's fairly optimistic right there. There's some optimism right there that he is close to getting back to the practice field, but they just don't necessarily feel like it that, that he's ready today specifically. Maybe he'll practice tomorrow. Maybe he'll practice Friday. We got to see. Of course, I'm going to keep y'all updated every single day or even within the same day. If we get any extra information, any extra updates, of course, I will update y'all on that but when we're talking about close to getting back to the practice field what does close even mean like again like i've already said in several videos in the past two days i'm pretty sure that dan quinn is being extra unclear and ambiguous as possible on purpose to keep the bears in the dark like like i've also been saying for the past couple of days i'm perfectly fine with being in the dark as a fan if that is the purpose to all of this to make sure that the bears are in the dark i'm willing to sacrifice my own fandom and sanity as far as worrying about Jaden daniels as long as the bears don't get to exactly know what we're planning on doing with Jaden daniels leading up to this game until we absolutely have to disclose what we're doing at the last second so their defense doesn't have an entire week to prepare for either marcus mariota or Jaden daniels whichever way we're leaning i mean i feel like at this point this entire organization has more than earned the benefit of the doubt with every decision that they make as far as a front office, coaching staff, with players, everything like that. I feel like ever since we've hired Adam Peters and Josh Harris was our owner, they've earned the benefit of the doubt. And every step of the way, they've earned even more benefit of the doubt. Because who expected us to be 5-2 and two at this point with Jaden Daniels looking like a top five quarterback in the NFL, all of this type of stuff. And even just all of the free agency moves. I'm working on a whole Adam Peters video on how he basically was right about everything even the things that we doubted since he first got hired even like the, the hiring of bobby johnson and things like that as our offensive lines coach from the giants like every step of the way he has seemed to be at the worst sort of right and so I just feel like even with this Jaden Daniels situation, we need to keep affording them the benefit of the doubt until they give us a reason not to. And I feel like they never will. Also, Dan Quinn added that Jaden Daniels will get treatment and participate in meetings today, though. So he's still with the team. He's still going through all of the meeting stuff, offensive install and things like that. We'll see how much it matters, even though he can't actually go into the field and actually like practice it physically. But at least he's getting the mental reps, I'm assuming. Dan Quinn also said, quote, the practice field is the next step of that. We want to make sure he can fully express himself and do all of the things that he does on the field. Be him fully turned up, unquote. And yes, Dan Quinn did actually say turned up. Also, Dan Quinn said that the next 
the update will come on Friday when Dan Quinn speaks with reporters again. Even though we'll see the injury report after practice tomorrow, as in Thursday, October 24th, and we'll get some answers from that too. It's just that we won't hear Dan Quinn actually speak to the media and give us an update from his own words out loud until Friday specifically, but we'll see that injury report after Thursday's practice and see what Jaden Daniels is. Did not participate, limited, full, whatever it is. We'll see that Thursday, so we don't necessarily have to wait till Dan Quinn speaks on Friday to get an update so of course I will be updating y'all tomorrow as well of course I will update again when Dan Quinn speaks on Friday also since Jaden Daniels isn't practicing that means he will not be available for the media today typically the starting quarterback speaks with the media after Wednesday's practice so now that will be Marcus Mariota speaking to the media following practice and if he says anything interesting I'll also keep y'all updated on that later on this evening also, shouts out to MofoPog for this point. Good point. Obviously, I know nothing, but after hearing the importance of reps and walkthroughs and Cliff's teaching style, this could be significant for the rookie quarterback. I completely agree. This takes me to my point. Austin Eckler just said last week that Cliff Kingsbury goes into every game and adds like 30% of the plays the week leading up to the game each week that they end up running against that opponent. That is crazy. So that means that Cliff Kingsbury is adding an almost entire third of the playbook and game plan that's specifically built to attack the next defense that we're going against to the offense in practices in the week leading up to each opponent. So missing practice time in days is pretty big as far as preparing for the next defense. Is Jaden Daniels that elite to where he can miss practice and still play against a top 10 Bears defense, even though he wouldn't have had the chance to fully learn 30% of the game, the new game plan that Cliff Kingsbury wants to deploy against the Bears. And so now this takes me to my to my next question. This begs the question with how Cliff Kingsbury installs an entire basically third of the offensive game plan in the week leading up to each matchup. Would we be better off with and would we have a better chance to win? with a 100% prepared and 100% healthy Marcus Mariota or a 70% prepared Jaden Daniels and a not 100% healthy Jaden Daniels. And I'm not going to lie. I'm just ready for it to be Sunday, man, so I can stop worrying about all of this, man. And, uh, and even Adam Schefter even said in his tweet, though, it appears to be trending towards Mariota getting to start on Sunday. But that's just based off of the fact that Jaden Daniels is not practicing. So don't read into that too much as if that is literally his prediction based off of like things he's heard, sources he has or anything like that. That's just based off of what, that, what the information I just gave you. That's what he surmised from it. Also, Dan Quinn said, quote, not a lot of changes, unquote, for Jaden Daniels when it comes to the walkthrough work, film study, etc. Quote, good news for him is there's a lot of banked reps, unquote. So maybe Jaden Daniels can be more prepared than we expect. Again, he's going to be there for team meetings. He just won't necessarily be able to rehearse and practice it on the field, at least today-wise. Who knows? Maybe he practices tomorrow and we're right back on schedule. All he did was miss a day of practice. We'll see. Uh, of course, again, I will keep y'all updated on everything. And also, Dan Quinn finished his press conference by saying quote i'll give you an update on Jaden on friday until then let's go kick some a word unquote i absolutely love dan quinn's energy all the time also moving on to the next part of this video just a you know quick little intermission in the middle but this is still important commander head coach dan quinn updated us on the left tackle starting rookie left tackle brandon coleman concussion injury and he also said that he's not practicing day today as he goes through a concussion protocol but he also said that he's hitting his markers in the protocol right now so positive news maybe maybe he will be ready for the the Bears game even if Jaden Daniels isn't because remember when Austin Eckler had a concussion injury he had to miss an entire week I think it may be even two, like a week and a half or something like that. Whereas Brandon Coleman, maybe he doesn't even have to miss a week. Maybe he just had to miss like half the Panthers game. And then he has an entire week to get ready for the Bears. And then maybe he's ready to go back out there and start again. We'll see. That's another guy I will keep you updated on all throughout the week. Every little update I get, I promise you, y'all will get it as well. Now moving on to technically the second half of this video. It's time to talk about this huge linebacker help that we are getting leading up to this Bears game. The Bears should probably be terrified because we've had one specific weakness in our linebacker room that now with the return of Jordan McGee that weakness may finally go away again but I'm, I'm explaining this a little later 
Let's be patient with the rookie. He's missed a lot of time this season, and, and especially since he's just a rookie, just period. And you see how Mike Sanford still has gotten better and better each game. Remember, this is Jordan McGee's first game coming up. So don't be too impatient with them. Don't have your expectations too high. But as a Bears offense, I'm like, dang, man, that was one of their only true weaknesses on the defense. And now that weakness is probably gone. So Washington Commanders officially finally activated linebacker Jordan McGee off of the injured reserve list. He officially takes the roster spot created by Jamin Davis's release Tuesday. It, that was yesterday. And I'm pretty sure Jamin Davis was released for this specific reason so that we could bring Jordan McGee off of the injured reserve and he can be able to go. He's been practicing for the last three weeks. Remember, we activated his 21 day to return window, I guess 21 days ago. I don't know why we waited until the very last second to finally activate him. That's the only thing that makes me not super optimistic about this situation. But at the same time, every time you've looked on the practice on the injury reports for the past few weeks, he's been a full participant in every day of practice. And I guess maybe we've just been withholding him this long to make sure he's ready for game speed, to make sure he's in game shape to where he doesn't go out there and hurt himself again. But he's been fully healthy for a few weeks now. Now he's just actually ready to play in games. There's a difference between being life healthy and practice healthy versus game healthy and like actually your body is accustomed to taking hits and delivering hits and then you know delivering and taking punishment and actually ready to play in actual real nfl regular season games especially for the first time being your rookie season either way though Remember with those 21 day windows, you know, if you're on the injured reserve and then they start letting you practice, you have 21 days to officially come off off that injured reserve list and onto the actual 53 man roster, the real roster where everybody else is that plays on Sundays. If you don't, the NFL is like, no, 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 you will not finesse us. You're not about to have a player on injured reserve practicing and then just you keep them on injured reserve short term. No, if you if after that 21 day window, you're not able to bring them up to the 53 man roster. He he is officially on injured reserve for the remainder of the season. He is no longer allowed to play no matter how healthy he is. So we have now reached the end of that window and he is being upgraded to play against the Bears. Dan Quinn even spoke on Jamin Davis though. We, fi we finally get some information on Jamin Davis from this team other than he was cut. Dan Quinn said, quote, what a good teammate. He's definitely somebody we will be watching and rooting for unquote and again like i said in my video yesterday breaking down the jamie davis release i would not be surprised if he ends up going to another team and actually looking pretty good i don't think he'll ever live up to his first round pick expectations but i think he can end up on going to another team with a bigger role than he had here and end up actually looking pretty good i wouldn't be surprised also shouts out to mark bullet because i completely agree with this he said was thinking about this yesterday releasing davis created the roster spot for mcgee i'm sure they'd love to get mcgee on the field next to wagner which could free up Luvu to play more on the edge. Uh, and I completely agree, especially with Doris Armstrong still banged up. I'm not sure if he'll play against the Bears. Javante John Baptiste is on IR, even though I'm pretty sure it's more short term than Jonathan Allen, who's out for season. And then Cleveland Farrell still working his way back from missing a couple of games. He's starting to play more and more snaps every game, but he's still not 100% fully healthy right now. So we have an interesting group of edge rushes, and we're going to need a pass rush against Caleb Williams. We're going to need a pass rush just as much as we've needed it pretty much any other game this season. And so allowing Frankie Louvu, freeing up Frankie Louvu to be able to rush the pass some more because Jordan McGee is on the field is a huge addition to this defense, to this entire team, but especially specifically that linebacker core. Now let's go back to the draft evaluation of Jordan McGee because again, he hasn't played so far this season. He is a rookie. He got hurt in the first preseason game. We haven't seen him since. So who was he in college and why am I so excited about getting him back as far as this linebacker group moves forward? Because just to let you know, Bobby Wagner and Frankie Louvu have been playing almost every single snap every game so far we literally don't have a third linebacker that we can trust to go out there and at least give those guys a reason to take a breather like just chill out remember how we were overusing Jonathan Allen and Deron Payne last year because we didn't have other defensive tackles we can necessarily trust to go in there and give those guys a breather but also not be a liability when they're on the field to allow those guys to get a breather that's pretty much how we've been with this linebacker core so far we just have not had another linebacker that Dan Quinn and Joe Wood Jr. could trust to go out there and even like tap Jordan uh, Frankie Louvu or Bobby Wagner on the show to like, hey, just sit down, catch your breath, gain some stamina back. I'll take it from here for a couple of days. I'll alleviate you of your duties just for a little while. We haven't even had a guy that could do that. And I believe Jordan McGee can at the very least 
do that but on top of that i also believe he's going to bring an element to the linebacker core that we've been missing even while bobby wagner and frankie louvu have been playing at a great level well first of all if you look at his relative athletic score the only downside to him is maybe his size and he's gotten bigger since he's gotten to the nfl he's gotten that nfl nutrition the nfl workout program the nfl weight room and things like that i'm very sure just based off of what i've seen looking at him he's no longer just six foot one and 232 i believe he's even bigger than that especially weight wise i don't think he's gotten taller but i think he's definitely gained some significant muscle and i also believe that even after gaining that significant muscle i still believe he's grading with his explosion look at his vertical look at his broad jump all great look at his speed 455 at 232 all elite numbers for 40 yard dash 20 yard split and 10 yard split and then his agility grade i mean look at the shuttle look at the three cone all elite elite numbers a 9.75 u relative athletic score that is absolute freak athleteness right there i mean to even dive even further if you don't trust like the relative athletic score you need to hear it yourself as far as how you compare to other linebackers in this past draft he was the most athletic linebacker in the entire draft mcgee finished tied for first and 10 yard split with a 1.54 out of all linebackers in the combine third and broad jump fourth and vertical fifth in the 40 among all linebackers and when you put all of that data together he was the most line uh, most athletic linebacker in the entire draft class matter of fact if you don't even trust the relative athletic score from his combine results can you at least trust next gen stats as you can see on the screen right now he was the most athletic linebacker in the entire draft even my dog Peyton Wilson Trevin Wallace Edrian Cooper and y'all know how bad I want Peyton Wilson and how bad I wanted Edrian Cooper as well but especially Peyton Wilson because I felt like on tape he was the most athletic linebacker in the entire nation or at least in that draft class and then Jordan McGee goes out there in that combine and proves at the very least I'm as athletic as Peyton Wilson but there's an argument to be made that I'm even more athletic than Peyton Wilson also Let's talk about efficiency because in just 32 pass rush snaps in college, he generated 20 pressures in six sacks. That means out of 32 times that he's rushed the passer in college, 26 of those times he affected the quarterback. Again, 20 pressures in six sacks is insane on 32 pass rush snaps. That has to be like Hall of Fame level efficiency right there. I'm not saying he's a future Hall of Famer. I'm pretty sure there are certain circumstances out of, as to how that worked. That was like something Temple would randomly throw at offenses and catch them off guard and then his athleticism and elite playmaking skills allowed him to be that effective but we'll see how it translates to the next level also shouts out to ryan fowler he brings up a good point he said while looking out for jordan mcgee and this is before the draft even happened he said he had a defensive coach describe his game as an athlete with arguably the best instincts at linebacker in the entire class so not only was he the most athletic linebacker in the class according to relative athletic score next gen stats and whatever metrics you want to look at whatever source whatever experts you want to trust he was the most athletic linebacker in the 2024 class but on top of that you had a defensive coach said that he may also be the most instinctive linebacker in the class it's amazing that we even found a way to get him in the fifth round ryan fowler finishes by saying not me in this class with that can play with that blend of tenacity and explosiveness as well because this is also a guy if you love johnny newton's motor you're gonna love jordan mcgee he has that same exact never give up always fighting i mean must be a battery in his back type of play then you also have doug farrar he talked about after we drafted jordan mcgee he tweeted and doing a film session looking at jordan mcgee his tape at temple he said the commanders are revising their linebacker score with Bobby Wagner and Frankie Louvu and I'm interested to see where fifth round of Jordan McGee fits in over time an undersized player with speed all over the field he fits the modern NFL prototype as a guy who can play in the box and in the slot even as a linebacker then you also have Rick C from the Commanders Rick for Commanders I completely agree this is like basically what I was saying about Jordan McGee after we drafted him and I did an entire like 30 40 minute breakdown on him this was like a quicker you know long story short version of what I said in my video and that's why I felt like this was perfect he said a quick look at the highlights and dude fills gaps takes good angles he's a tackling machine again another guy that is violent at contact there's a theme here tough physical and violent we are going to be annoying as hell on this defense i completely agree i'm telling you once we add jordan mcgee to this defense that is the final piece like the thanos piece now of course we can upgrade it edge rusher we can upgrade it cornerback but we literally don't have somebody in the linebacker room that can do what jordan mcgee 
does because now fast forward into a few months later even our legendary linebackers coach and ken norton jr and our disruptive starting pro bowl linebacker what it looks to be in frankie luvu were both showering jordan mcgee with praise all offseason before he ended up getting hurt in that first preseason game you just kept hearing them glowing about it. anytime they were asked about frankie luvu they were just glowing they were just so happy they were like man this guy's way further ahead in his development understanding of this defense than he should be so even though he has missed the entire preseason basically and the first seven weeks of the regular season as a rookie along with training camp maybe jordan mcgee rapid development before the injury he sustained may aid him towards not being completely lost on the field in his first regular season debut and hopefully he doesn't look like this is his first regular season debut as a rookie for his career if Ken Norton Jr. and Frankie Luvu were that hyped about how quickly McGee was learning the defense in training camp maybe he won't look as bad as a typical rookie that has missed several important months of rookie football and practices we'll see though that's just an optimistic view i'm not gonna lie please do not expect him to go out there and look like levante david in his first game as a rookie please do not do that but when he does finally catch up and adjust to the nfl speed and everything like that and you know learning how to read uh, nfl level offenses and not necessarily college level you know deep offenses that temple went against he's going to be everything we've wanted in an off-ball linebacker since this season started in helping frankie luvo and wagner not have to literally play every single snap i mean and also on top of that both of them are elite at stopping the run and rushing the passer and having jordan mcgee back finally and his ability to cover very well will allow luvo and wagner to focus on stopping the run and blitzing even more so what luvo and wagner are best at right now so far seven weeks into the season they can start to do that more often because Jordan McGee will allow them to do that more often by taking away a lot of their coverage responsibilities instead of asking Bobby Wagner to backpedal like some of those touchdowns he's allowed I remember one vividly against the Giants I remember one against um, I believe it was maybe the Cardinals or the Ravens I can't remember exactly or I know I think it was the Bengals another one is he's, he's backing up in zone coverage and then the quarterback just throws a touchdown right over his head that's the type of those are the type of situations we want to take Bobby Wagner away from and that is the type of situation Jordan McGee should excel in pretty quickly maybe not necessarily immediately but very quickly you'll see that Jordan McGee should be our best linebacker coverage wise and so that's why Jordan McGee comes in and fits as like a perfect puzzle piece to the linebacker room to make sure it basically doesn't have any more weaknesses I love Wagner and Luvu but they just haven't been great or consistent in coverage right now which is understandable and expected especially Bobby Wagner at this age and Frankie Luvu that's just not necessarily his game both of those guys are elite run stoppers and great at rushing the passer Frankie Luvu's more of the pass rusher Bobby Wagner's more of the run stopper and the quarterback of the defense green down on the helmet true Mike linebacker quarterback of the defense hearing the play calls from Joe Wood Jr getting everybody situated looking that with the offense is showing and then calling the defensive audible to make sure we attack and we counter with the right defensive game plan they're all great at all of that stuff and they're serviceable in coverage but jordan mcgee is going to be great in coverage maybe not necessarily week one of his rookie season which will technically be week eight of the actual nfl regular season but i know eventually i'm very confident in the fact that he will be everything we've been missing in this linebacker room that's why we drafted jordan mcgee after after signing Frankie Louvu and Bobby Wagner, Joe Wood Jr. and Adam Peters, I'm sure that they know what they are doing. And again, even like what I mentioned with the whole Jaden Daniels situation, this front office of coaching staff has earned every bit of benefit of the doubt from us as a fan base. And I feel like Jordan McGee, I'm telling y'all, some of y'all that may be sleep on him, you're going to wake up sooner rather than later. Also, before we go, Ben Sennett, of course, has one touchdown on two receptions. And technically, his first catch ever was a touchdown. Dan Quinn joked in his press conference, quote, we got to target him more, unquote. I love that quote. But yeah, man, that's the end of the video. Please get in the comment section. Let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video. Please still follow that like button, still follow the subscription button, and still follow the bell next to that subscription button so you get notification each and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one. Make sure you stay tuned to all of the content, man. I really appreciate y'all. If you made it this far in the video, you are the go. Make sure you do not leave this video without leaving a like. And of course, please let me know in the comment section how you feel about 
about everything discussed in this video. How do you feel about the Jaden Daniels injury update? How do you feel about the Brandon Coleman injury update? Especially when it comes to Jaden Daniels, my question. Do you prefer a fully prepared and fully healthy Marcus Mariota? Or do you prefer a less prepared and less healthy Jaden Daniels? Let me know how you feel about that. And of course, let me know how you feel about Jordan McGee finally being the answer to all of the problems that we've had in the linebacker core and really a lot of the defensive problems we've had so far this season just in general. Let me know if you feel like Jordan McGee will finally be that boost to the defense that we've been looking for for the past few weeks. Let me know if you agree or disagree. Let me know how you feel about everything. And of course, again, do not leave this video without leaving a like. Of course, I will keep y'all updated on everything commanders throughout the day. This is my first video today. This is not my only video today. So make sure you pull back up later on this evening. I'm going to catch y'all later. Appreciate y'all. I'm out.